following podcast is being brought to you by the Defy Life Podcast Network. Welcome back to Unsupervised, the spinoff. This week, your friendly neighborhood hosts are going to discuss the Rona. Our wacky stat of the week. Do you even know the Constitution? In petty party politics, has Bernie done, and would we have been better off with Hillary? And on our topic of the week, see, while I was trying to smash, I started to like you. Y'all enjoy the show. This way, go. Are we? This thing on? Are we back? I think we back. Gentlemen, are we back? I feel like he's back. That's what I mean. We're in the house. Yeah, we're back. Hey, you already know what I'm going to say. Let's get it then. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. Welcome back, y'all. Come on in. Have a seat. Relax. Your boys are back. Episode 7 of Unsupervised the Spinoff Podcast. Powered by the Defy Life Podcast Network. www.gotofylife.com And we are also sponsored by defylifepods.com That's where we. That's where you can find us at. So go check us out there. Unsupervised the Spinoff Podcast Episode 7. You already know it's your boy. It's two for Tuesdays. It's Mr. Real himself, the real is back. I'm back with my brothers, man. Episode 7, man. Here we are. Excited to be here today. Hey, man. Hollywood Paul. What's good with you? Hey, man. <laughs> I'm back with the sound effects and full effect, as you can see. But nah, man. I'm just happy to be back with y'all, man. It's another great week. Episode 7, you know what I'm saying? We're keeping things going. Keeping the momentum of the show, keeping the listeners in tune to what we got to say, what's going on in the world. I'm just happy to be here, man. Hey, man, I, hey, I, and we, and I appreciate you being here, brother. I'm happy to have you as always, wonderful co-host. And um, without further ado, our other wonderful co-host, WCJ West Coast J. What they do? You know, over here, I'm over here trying to duck this Rona, ducking and dodging the Rona. You know what I'm saying? Locked up in the crib. Staying sequestered, as it were. Oh, sequestration. There's a word. There's an SAT word. There we go. <laughs> we try and use those every so often to make sure people are still paying attention, you know. No doubt. Speaking of people paying attention, man, let them, let them know where they can find us. Oh, yeah, definitely. We can be found at... Um, iTunes, Google or Google Podcast, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, uh, definitely at DefyLifePods.com, and pretty much anywhere else your podcast needs are met weekly. Hey man, hey, we, we appreciate that. Um, definitely check us out. Uh, check out our gear at the gear page. Um, and the whole Defy Life family, man. Shout out to Defy Life family. Um, the whole team. Um, speaking of somebody in the Defy Life family, um, shout out to regular Degula, regular Scott, uh, West Coast. Why, why we shouting West Coast? Why we shout, Why we shouting out regular Scott and, and Uncle Oz? Man, the Take a Knee group decided that they were listening to us talk about how March Madness got canceled and go into detail about. Tar Heels basketball in particular. You know, where where is where is young Anthony going? Where is uh what what's the status of Roy in our opinion? And anywho, they decided that uh they were gonna do uh basically a March Madness of comic book characters. So they took Oz came up with thirty two, oh. Scott came up with thirty two, and they made a field of sixty four. And they just going head up with each nice. other. Nice. So I got the I got to give me I got to give me some of that. That's the that's the latest one that dropped this week. Yeah. Hey, well, listeners, you heard it here, man. If you go, there's another reason to check out um, more family from the network. Um, take a knee for Marvel versus DC. 
powered by the Defy Podcast Network as well. Um, go out there, take a listen, man. It's got your 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 your, your comic characters, heroes and all, and and sixty four of them. And um, heroes, villains, men's, women's, you name it, all of them. No doubt, no doubt. Go over there and check them out, man. Well, also um, want to throw out something right quick, money for all of the listeners out there that are you know liking and uh, following us on Facebook. That is our, our only social media right now. So make sure you're liking, sharing, and commenting because you do you will be entered into a drawing to rent a free night's hotel stay at any marriott location again that is a free hotel Ooh. stay one night one night on us the guys on. that unsupervised the suit the podcasts all no right, so, doubt no doubt yeah, i mean we got locations all over the world and right now with the rona going around the travel expenses are very extremely low so make sure you take advantage of that guys <laughs> hey, definitely take advantage. That's shout out, man. Shout out to Hollywood Paul for that one, man. Hey, we we proud to bring that to y'all. That's dope. Um, chill, man. Comment. Just interact with the page. Become a top fan out there too. The top fan badges are on. Interact with the page. Become a top fan and win something special from the Light. You know, you just never, you just never know what we're gonna do, man. Um, it's all about growth and 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 getting content out to the listeners and. So yeah, tell tell somebody about it. Share it with somebody. I share it all the time. So, um, and 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 let us know what you think. Comment, um, rate, all of that stuff. Five star rate, hopefully. Um, and and make us one of your one of your one of your podcast favorites. Um, without further ado, man. Like I said, we are y'all. First of all, we had a, we had an amazing show last week. Definitely. Um, congratulations, fellas. We all came in here and y'all did it again. Um, this is episode seven, man. So we gotta we gotta Ooh. follow that up with even more heat, man. That's that's crazy. So, man, without further ado, we we gonna jump right in. Um, West Coast, West Coast, Jay, man, how was your week, man? I told you, man, I've been ducking and dodging the Rona. I'm in here maintaining all kinds of social distances. Like everybody need to give me at least. <laughs> I believe it was the the great. Urban scholar Earl Stevens, who said, "Give me forty feet and an ounce of space." So, in reality, I ain't did nothing except stay away from people. No doubt, no doubt. Um, Hollywood Paul, man, how's, how's your week been, man? Man, my week's been pretty good so far, man. I can't complain. Not a big complainer myself, but uh, I've been I've been on West Coast status, man. I've been ducking, ducking and dodging, man. People going down left and right around me. I don't know if it's fake sickness or they get the the uh, the easy fourteen day at home stay sickness. I don't know. I don't know, but I do know uh, I've been uh, thoroughly washing my entire body and hands thoroughly. I have still been going to the gym, and I've been wiping down and washing everything I use prior to and after using it. I hope everybody else that goes to gyms, for, you know, follow suit. Um, for the most part, man, just, you know, stay connected to family and friends, loved ones. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and shout out to your pops, too. Uh, wasn't it your pops' birthday recently? Money? Nah, my pops' birthday was in October. Uh, oh, what, I, just, what's, I just saw something you posted. Oh, you know what? My 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 father retired recently. Oh, well, yeah, big he, shout out to your father yeah. for retire, man. I feel I feel like I feel like I know y'all, man. I feel like I know you from somewhere <laughs> other than here when I saw your pic. For real, for real. I, I, I'm good with faces, but anyways, that's that's. I digress. My no week's doubt. been great. Um, you know, what I'm saying dodging the Rona. Glad to be back here with you fellas. Uh, I've been looking forward to it, honestly. Um, just just happy to get it going, man. No doubt, no doubt, man. We are back, man. Um. You know, I I did my week was my week was pretty long as always. Um, you know, work work always kind of takes the takes the cake and gets the most hours. And then you know, talking to my family and making sure everybody's good there. Um, you know that's that's just something that we do. And so I've been cognizant a little bit of you know you know trying to call my parents and. My siblings and you know my, my my nephews and all of that and just checking up on them, man, showing them a little love, seeing how they day, how their week was, you know. If you can if you can get some time to, to do that, um, folks, remember that's important, you know. You know, so they they enjoyed it. So I actually 
I think I, I think I talked to my mother for like seven and a half hours on Saturday. It was crazy. Like we we started talking at like two, and um, she, when we was done, it was like nine, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, golly, boy, <laughs> hey, hey, look here, Miss Lady, you know, yeah. but, you know, just wanted to, you know, make sure, you know, she she knew I wanted to. You know, get at her, and we just talked about all types of stuff, about all types of stuff. So it was, it was it did my heart good. I think it did her heart good, and um, you know, we will definitely continue to do that. A gentleman, you know, um, it's been a week, but I didn't heard y'all. I didn't heard both of y'all mention it, and um, I'm gonna just go ahead and mention it myself, man. So the coronavirus, what is a co? C O V I nineteen or C O what is it something nineteen? C O V I D nineteen. C O V I D nineteen. Or as the youngins is calling it, the Rona. So, black people, we I love black people. Um, yes, we have we have given this coronavirus a whole new nickname. That the West Coast just said it. We we call it the Rona. You know, um, <laughs> boy, y'all don't want that Rona. Like, <laughs> that's that's just how, you, that's just how we, that's just how we are. That's just how we are. So we so we we talked about this extensively last week, but that was a week ago, and lots of lots of things have happened since then. Um, and our pre on our pre show, West Coast was like, boy, that shit escalated quickly. And so last week when we left you, they had just canceled. Um, the the NBA season, the NHL season, they just postponed opening day on, for the M, for the MLB. Um, and I think they had closed Disneyland at the time. Yep. Um, a week later, I'll just say some of the things in my area. Schools are closed. Um, most employers. Um, are letting their employees now work from home. I know I've been working from home since. Uh, it's actually today was my first day working from home, but I um I did go to work Monday and announced uh, proudly that this will be my last day working in the office. Um, so if you don't let me work from home, I'll be working from home anyway. So, <laughs> so that happened, and I'm I'm although now that I've been working from home, I actually realized that um I don't have a good I don't have a good work from home chair, but um, you know I'll I'll I'll, I'll make do um, to keep me from getting that Rona. But schools close. Um, I won't say work is closed. I'll just say most people are working from home. Um, the governor has come out and said that they are they are holding um, foreclosures and evictions for at least the next thirty days. I'm um, in the state of North Carolina. Um, so you cannot be foreclosed or evicted against. Um, they don't want people in the courthouse. Um, uh, um, parks are closed. Restaurants are closed after 5 p.m. Uh, bars are closed, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, hotels are closing. Sir, th- this thing is really hitting. Not my hotel. Not, not yours, not yet. This thing. <laughs> But this thing, I'm just saying, this thing is hitting the service industry, bartenders, waitresses, um, um, anyone that's, anyone working in parks and recs for the, like, all of these industries are, are just now seeing the beginning effects of um, some of this fallout. And I saw that the United States Congress is playing around with the idea of, a trillion dollar um, inf- infusion into the economy and giving every American a thousand dollars. So I know that was kind of uh, that was kind of a, a drawn out um, rendition of what kind of what's going on, but I wanted to catch everybody up, and I wanted and now I'll turn it over to my co-hosts so they can let me know your thoughts on kind of what's been going on in the past week, um, excluding kind of what we covered uh, last week, guys. Uh, West Coast, let's start with you, man. Um, All right, well, obviously, I'm going to go over to the West Coast. San Francisco is closed. The city itself. Golly. (laughs) They have basically gone full Italy. So there is an actual lockdown. Uh, 
on City of San Francisco, where the city will legally prohibit residents from leaving their homes except to meet basic needs, so the doctor, groceries, medicine, till at least April 7th. Damn. Like, it's a lot going on. Like, they closed the city. Shit, how do you... I mean, wow, how do you... How, so, what does that mean? Like, how do you... When you say you closed the city, like, well, how do you... I mean, can you imagine... Like, I, what does that look like? When you close... Like, are you still going to work? Are you still going no, to... No, no, no. Everybody should be working from home. Everybody should be. Anybody who has the access to be able to work from home should be working from home. Now, past that... Uh, the police are supposed to stop people, and if they are not going to one of the aforementioned places, you know, gas station, grocery store, um, to non-essential places is how they're referring to it, then they are to order them to go back home. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah, um, six Bay Area counties, so that's, that's happening. That's martial law. Yeah, I was say, that sounds a little bit like martial law. Exactly what that sounds like. Like, it's a step away from martial law, but it's about what they're doing. It's what they've had to do in Italy. So, it's kind of a, it's a super preemptive measure, but for them to do it for three weeks, it's, it's until at least April 7th. And then, my cousins are, their nieces and nephews and stuff are out of school until the 13th of April. Right. Like anybody that's uh, anybody that's that's in the service industry, like you touched on, uh, the city of Denver has closed all restaurants. Uh, all restaurants, indoor dining has to be closed for at least eight weeks. Delivery and takeout is cool, mm. but gatherings of more than fifty people are also banned. So we can't be throwing wild parties no more. Right. You know, Damn. the so what is government that? in general is suggesting that we use what they're referring to as social distancing, which is my favorite thing for give me at least three feet. <laughs> social distancing. Wow. Preferably I, you six know what? to ten I, feet. I think we're doing a lot of that. I think we're doing a lot of social distancing right now. Um, boy, it's, this is incredible. Um, Hollywood Paul, man, what you think about what's been going on in the last week? I honestly think that shit straight from a movie, man. I mean, I was just uh, watching, uh, what was it? Um, I think it was Contingent or Containment, some some movie that came out in 2011. Contagion. I think that that's Contagion? it, Contagion, yeah. Uh, with, uh, what was it, Bradley Cooper, I want to say it was in it? Um, Contagion. Anyway. It, um, it was just straight up a movie, man. I mean, takes me back to the outbreak, you know, all, all that stuff. Um, you know, like my job, they've already issued out a, hey, if you are sick with the flu or any kind of cold, you immediately need to go home and we'll pay you to stay home for 14 days. You got kids at home, go home, we'll pay you. Uh, you've been in contact with somebody with the corona, uh, think you got it or tested positive, you're home for 14 days. So it's been crazy. My only thing is, what if this thing lingers by the past 14 days? Are we going to put out a new contingency? Or like, what's going to happen? Because uh, oh, I, mean, I, could, I could definitely go to the beach right now for 14 days. Oh, it will. It, it, will, <laughs> linger, it will linger along in the 14 days. This I, I is believe just it the, will. This is just the original. They want to see how do we do with the original round of social distancing to just see if we can begin to curb it. Right. But this is going to be like, like, for instance, the kids are out of school until the end of March um, scheduled to go back in April. But I don't think, I don't think students are going back to school at all this year. Mm. Um, I, mm. I don't think, I don't think we're going to have sports seasons this year. Yeah. I, after seeing KD who is basically like been quarantined for the most part, working out with select few uh, personnel, to see that he hit this test positive for it, that's a lot, man. That says a lot that, you know, I don't – I honestly think that, you know, LeBron's great uh, fourth ring chase down that he was at after this year, I think that run is, 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 is over um, as, as much as it hurts me to say it. Um, 
March Madness, man, there's so many questions I have about what are they going to do? Are they going to give these kids eligibility back? You know, uh, a lot of them have, or, or top prospects go to the league this year. Into the draft. It's, it's so much going on, man. That, that like I said uh, last week, just just referencing it, like it's gonna it's gonna change a lot. It'll change a lot of perspectives. It'll change a lot of how we how we do things. Um, and hopefully, you know this this situation teaches us that we need to be prepared for anything, and we can't get too comfortable with the way things normally operate because anything can happen at the drop of a hat. You know. Uh, West Coast Jay, you think the government gives each U.S. citizen a thousand dollars? I think they're gonna try something. And a thousand bucks may get you through the next two, three weeks. Maybe, you know, those people have like you think about mortgage and rent and any other additional bills that they have to pay, phone bills, the internet bill, whatever you gotta pay. Like, is a thousand bucks gonna cover that for the month? Right. Right. Well, I'm, I'm reading. I'm reading things. So, for instance, Spectrum. If you don't already have Spectrum, they're giving they're giving customers free internet for two months. Um, I think T-Mobile said, "Don't worry about your bill this month, or they'll pay your bill, or some." So it's, it, um, I don't, I don't, it's some. I don't know exactly what it is, but I know. And like I said, the the governor of North Carolina has already said, "Hey, we're not doing evictions and for so foreclosures this month." Um, it. A, it it might go to show that the first thing it shows is some some human just like you said last week you kind of lost faith in humanity. This is actually showing me something. Um, I don't I don't know that we've been I don't know if we've been in, at, at at a pandemic status before or, or, or of this magnitude that that's done all, what it's done to the economy, but. We know that it's a lot of people not going to work right now. Not not just in in our space that looks like we can work from home and still like we're considered working. But it's a lot of people they don't have jobs anymore, you know. So, and I think to ask those people to still you know try to pay your car payment or still whatever whatever you need whatever it is, um, I think I think there's something to be said when 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 companies are willing to at least take. You know s- some of that profit margin that they have, and kind of dig into it a little bit because that actually is affecting their bottom line revenue, which kind of shows how much money they're actually making. But you know, um, it's still a it's still a good will and a good nice thing to do. Absolutely. I mean, okay. think about it. All these workers are the ones who have helped you make all this money. So if you don't have them, what do you really have? Not much, yeah, bro. I mean, it's it's not completely restoring my faith in humanity yet. Like basically, no. for this couple of weeks, again, I'm I'm still concerned about roughly day eight or nine. I don't know that I don't trust the discipline of the country to actually stay home that whole time. Right, right. Well, we'll see because we're in what day two. In theory, well. day two, yeah. Like where where I work, they still haven't even. They're still getting people set up to be able to work from home. Oh, so half of y'all already got the Rona. My my job has not figured out what the hell they're going to do. They're like, are we going to wait for them to shut the building down? Um, do we have the capability for people to work from home, or can we give everyone masks and just put them six feet apart from one another? Like they they are. What? Bro, right now they they have moved at my job. They have moved everyone supposedly six feet away from each other. Well, I'm six foot three, okay, um, and we did the test using me as 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 the guinea pig, and it ain't six feet for one. And they are we already know that you know if you sneeze or cough, that that junk travels well beyond six feet. It can rather, right? Um, so that's not going to save anybody. And at the same rate, uh, we're all breathing the same recycled air in, in the AC system. So what good is being six feet apart going to really do? Um, they don't have enough masks even available to sell at any store right now for all the employees we have. That, the masks that can actually protect us. So that's a waste of time. Basically, my company's trying to do anything they can to not have to pay anyone to not do any work, which I understand. I get it. 
<laughs> but they have no idea what they want to do at all. And and those who have the capability to work from home, they've already been sent. And, and like I said, anyone that looks like they said, like they tried to send me home, but I was like, nah, pimp, I need y'all to hold off on that because uh, I don't want y'all kicking me out nothing for 14 days. And then I come back and everybody dropping dead. And y'all like, well, you need to come to work. We have paid you 14 days. You know what I'm saying? So hold on. You know, I, I'm tough enough. I can come in. Send me home in the building clothes, you know what I'm saying? I'll be at the beach. But that's right. my take on things, you know what I'm saying? So they have no idea. And I work in the same bu- building as West Coast, so I have no idea what they're doing down there. I guess West we're waiting to see if they close down their side, and we'll obviously close our side. West Coast, what y'all doing on y'all side, man? I already told you. They're, they're doing all they can to get laptops to everybody. It was a dude walking around with a laptop cart. Handing out stuff like, all right, here's this and here's that. And, you know, we'll try and get you guys hotspots so you can work from home if you don't have that set up already. You know, here's all the paperwork. Here's all the things that we need you to sign. You know, we still need you guys to be productive. You have to excuse that voice, but that's what I feel like they all sound like. Right. That sounds like Nancy. I get it. I get you know, it. I feel like we all need you. We need everyone to try and be productive. That was real Nancy ish. Yeah, I was very nice. clock in and everything. If you can't clock in, just do one miss punch for the day. <laughs> so, you know, but everyone be safe. Your safety is our number one priority. So I make sure that so. everyone is healthy and safe. Right. I don't think so. I don't if think that so. that was the case, they would be waiting on them laptops, pal. You'd be at home right now. Like, like, like so, so I, I work for a software company. So we already all have laptops and docking stations. So we just brought them motherfuckers home and was like, shit, we just, I just work from here. Just make sure your, you know, your VPNs and all of that are set up and and you can rock. But when you, I don't know, like if you if you want if you want me to work, like just just say you want me to work, like. If you want me to come to if you want me to come to the building to work, then just say that too. Um, but then you can't also tell me like our our, our safety's your our safety's your biggest concern. I you know your safety is our biggest concern because um, I, I think that companies say that to people and then they, they like really they what they really mean is like though our profit margins is most important and then you're like right. somewhere you're like somewhere in there like so like he, whatever you got to do. To keep making sure that we get these profit margins and these numbers and all that, then that's what the fuck you really gonna be doing. But um, I would prefer for you to do that here. <laughs> yeah, no, we we legit got an email from the CEO that was like, if you can work from home, I would suggest you do so. That's like, it. A wasn't fact. even like, a, a question of you know, try to come in or whatever. No, that one was straight up. If you can work from home, do so. Right. Like, nigga. Nig- nigga. That's right. Just a like, that's that's what I heard from the email I was reading. It was just like, bruh, stay your punk ass at the crib. We don't know who got this shit. Don't be bringing that shit in the house. See, we don't know what words like global pandemic. We don't know what words like that mean. Like, it sound it sounds bad, but like we're really not really registering what that what that shit means, like global pandemic. Um y'all been to the store? Y'all been to the store anytime recently? The last three days? Nah, everybody in uh, everybody is at the shit. store, so I'm not. They raped that shit, bruh. I went last night, it was literally it was just comical. <laughs> Seriously comical. And again, that goes back to my faith in humanity. How many rolls of toilet tissue does one family need? Yeah, I, 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 I don't people know. This is for the people that already ain't food. changing their drawers and washing their hands. How many of y'all really gonna be wiping your ass like that? For real? I'm, I'm trying to. Fi- so I, I went to Walmart on Friday, and literally everybody, everybody in Walmart, the people had one cart in the front of them, one car in the back of them, and they both were filled as as much as you could possibly fill them with toilet paper. And I'm looking around and thinking to myself, like, I'm pretty on top of this shit. Like, y'all know I'm pretty on top of this shit. Like, I'd be reading and looking at all the shit and watching all the shit, and I was like, why, why they buying, 
why they buying? Am I missing something? Like, I'm sitting there trying to figure out, right. scratching my head, like trying to figure out what the fuck am I missing about the toilet paper? Is the wrong like, you diarrhea? Like, yeah, I'm like, you gonna be in the house shitting all day or something? Like, what? Like, the whole I was time. really. But if you ain't got no food, what's the use of all the toilet tissue? Though? I, I don't, I don't get it. And so, so people have had their theories, but I think those are just, I, I think people are just trying to have some sort of control over some shit that they know they don't, they have no control over. And so buying all the toilet tissue is, I, is a thing. And they, and, and, and this, in the first run, they didn't take all the tissue. I mean, they didn't take all the food. They just took all the tissue and all the water. But the last couple of days, because I've been going to the store every day to just do research, I, I, put, I put my gloves on and all that shit. I go into the store, and I just say, okay, what's in here? Now, today I went to Publix, and they were damn near – they were picked clean with food and all – of course, there was no there was no paper products in there at all. Um, but all the food was gone. There, there were some – the only thing in there – was some assorted turkey sausages and like hog maws. And I'm not sure what hog maw. Yeah. I've heard, I'm black, so I've heard hog maws before, but yeah. and I realized at looking at it, like I don't really know what hog maws, I'm gonna have to ask my dad. I don't really know what hog maws is. Y'all, y'all know what hog maws is? Not even close. I feel like that's something I gotta call some way it's older people to find out. Pig stomach. It's stuffed pig stomach. That's what it normally is. Oh, wow. Cool. I did not know that. Thank you. Hog maws. Yeah, so they were selling that in Publix. Yeah. So you know it's real because it was in Publix. But, yo, you, you West Coast, you know what else is gone besides the water? Um, um, all the beef and, and, and toilet paper? Milk sandwiches. Yeah. Um, but not that. What else go? All the guns and all the ammunition. That actually makes a whole bunch of sense. Bro, bro. It's a whole lot of people complaining about them going to the store and not being able to find tissue. But I bet you if you go to the gun shop, they don't have guns and they don't have ammo. Cause they are they are also pit clean. It's like it's like American like it's like when when they it's like when they we just need to buy something that makes us feel like I'm gonna be safe. And um, but yeah, man, I couldn't even my normal just my normal ammo run and my normal tissue and food run I couldn't make them because all the shit was gone. But then I started doing the research and they was like, yeah, it's no guns anywhere. It's like no ammo like. They have they have come and purchased it all, um, so I think people are really they might not be freaking all the way out, but I think there's a lot of people that's scared out there, and um, they're just trying to figure out some way that they can, that they can have some control. I mean, some people are honestly scared that things are going to go bad and really really bad, like things aren't going to open back up again. Things are going people going to run out of food, people are going to run out of things, and you know, they were talking about this at work. Where a lot of cats were buying ammo and guns, um, not only to protect themselves, but to go scavenge for supplies by using oh. those guns. And, you know, I mean, so you got some that want to protect their what their their stockpile. Oh God, I'm serious, man. I, and and now, mind you, I work in the hood, so right. these are hood based conversations, right? That I'm referencing. But uh, if the people in the hood speaking like that, with the people in the burbs and the country talking like too, they're talking about the same shit. I'm exactly. going to get some. I'm going to get some damn buckshot. Right. Just in case somebody come up in here, or I might need to go get something. You know. I mean, I'm like, damn. That's there goes my faith in humanity. <laughs> like, well, Jesus. Man. I th- I oh, think my. this subject is going to give us a, a a lot to talk about. Um, going into the next few weeks. So, man, listen to stay tuned. We're going to try to bring you all the latest updates the best we can. Of course, you know, at least um, be mindful, be educated, 
Um, I, I saw thousands of people at some beach in Florida. Like, I, I don't know if that's going to do the trick, you know, like. Yeah, that's not the move. Yeah, I don't know if that's the move. So um, just be mindful and, 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 and be safe. And like Hollywood Paul said, man, wash your hands, you know. And if you feel sick, you know, definitely don't. Don't 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 be out there trying to talk about you trying to work and all of that. Like if you feel sick, really get it checked out, you know. And um, everybody got got speed out there, man. Um, I didn't want to I didn't want to get too far in the weeds in that. So gentlemen, I thank you. Um, but we're gonna move on to our to our next topic, man. Um, but before we do that, West Coast man, why don't you give us a commercial so we can pay some bills? I feel like I can do that. Let's go on and uh, take y'all to this nice commercial break. Talking about this Defy Life gear. Y'all hold on. We're told that greatness is exceptional. When it should be expected. You choose every day to live your life intentionally. Without apology for how bright your light may shine. So go be great. Go be brilliant. Go be you. Go Defy Life. The Defy Life movement is one that speaks to each of us in its own way. Defy Life gear speaks to us all by reminding us that one size does not fit all. Visit DefyLifeGear.com to get fitted for greatness. Visit Defy Life Gear to get fitted for greatness. I love that dude voice. Yo, so we actually have a visual commercial for that now. And it is circulating around the masses, so... If you can jump on uh, Defy Life, um, the Facebook page, it's, it's out there. It's on our Instagram. You can follow it. Um, just check us out, www.godefylife.com. Check out our gear, gear page at defylifegear.com and our podcast page at defylifepods.com. Um, we a movement, man. We a family. So um, it's a lifestyle brand, and we're trying to, we're trying to bring you all the change that you want to see. So defy it, man. Um, let's get it. Let's get it. Um, welcome back. Episode seven, unsupervised, the spinoff, the podcast and um, some money. West Coast, J Hollywood, Paul. Hey, we're jumping into a different segment, man. Um, our wacky stat of the week. I think la- last week we did some uh, some some stats about America not being able to read on a third grade level. And um, this one's another little educational Wacky style of the week, man. It's um, I guess it's uh forty percent of the respondents um surveyed um couldn't recall any freedoms protected by the First Amendment of the United States Constitu- Constitution. How many people were surveyed? Um, thousands, and um, that's disturbing. <laughs> Um, so only 3% could name four out of the five freedoms that are protected by the first amendment. But of course those freedoms are the freedom of press, uh, the freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly and the right to petition the government or protest. Um, those, those are basic and fundamental rights of what we what we practice every day gentlemen uh 40 percent. that's a that's a high number um west coast what you, you think man do you think that number is indicative of the entire population like that 40 yeah. percent of the population doesn't actually know these things yeah that's why yeah that's that's what the that's what the survey is structured to determine that's a crazy number of things. It's a crazy number of people to not understand what your actual First Amendment right is. The First Amendment, the the number one one. <laughs> that's a that's facts. The number one one. That's that's facts. Um, but I, I I find that to be in, in line with other like weird statistics that I've read like that. Um. That I mean, and we'll probably get into this, but it's a very large, it's a very large percentage of Americans that don't know the three branches of government. Oh, 
Wow. Um, and that is a surprisingly high number. Um, so I just did the math. If there's 324 million people, then we're looking at 129 million that really just don't know that. It's a lot of people. That means we know a bunch of people that really just don't know that. It's a lot. That's a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, once technically, again, we were with the no gatherings of more than fifty people. There, uh, the assembly rule is being broken right now. Right. I mean, technically, we. Well, uh, I mean, yeah. Te- technically, we could we could tout our First Amendment freedom to assemble. Um, and that was all and... your people at South Beach. Everybody taking <laughs> selfies at Disney World before it closed. All the et cetera. Yeah, people. Hey, people were getting it in. Um, Hollywood Paul, man. Well, I think that's crazy, but man, what, what do you think? I can see it. Oh, absolutely, I can see it. I mean, bro, I work in I work in customer service. Uh, I, I speak to people all over this country every day who just don't know basic shit. Like just basic stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? So to not know what your actual rights are, hell yeah, I can believe that. That's why you have so many people saying, hey, just do what the cop tells you to. You know, just listen. <laughs> just do what he tells you and everything will be okay. Because you don't realize your rights are being violated. That's why you're saying just go along to get along. Because if you knew any better, you'd be saying, hey, cops, stop violating this guy's rights. Exactly. But, that's, that's deep. What that's deep, brother. Oh boy, you about to get us in trouble. Oh yeah. Oh, here we go. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Um, that's exactly right. Yeah, I mean, but you you know, that's why I don't really I don't get involved in like the Facebook back and forth as I used to cuz when you'll see that, you know, you're not arguing or disputing or discussing facts. You're discussing how someone feels. And they feel that way based on whatever social programming or, you know, uh, environmental programming or whatever the hell it may be that's causing them to feel that way. But they're not responding off of, OK, that's logical. That's based on what's written in the Constitution. That's that's the laws that govern. It. No, no, no. They're talking on pure emotion of how they feel. I feel like you should go along with what this guy says because he has a tough job. He wears the badge to enforce the law. He knows about more about the law than we do. So trust it or, you know, don't don't disobey because that's that's how a lot of folks are. But if you actually knew those rights, it's not being defiant to say, hey, you can't do this to me. It's it's right. literally standing up for yourself based on how the law is written, how your rights are given and, and granted that are inalienable, that they're yours. You know, um, it's just like, you know, you can't just walk around smacking girls on the ass or grabbing them by the pussy, President Trump, because you're infringing on people's fucking rights. And then right. anybody that's just grabbing him by the pussy and you're like, hey, man, stop arguing with that guy who's grabbing your pussy. Just listen to him and go along with it. No, you know that you're violating this person's rights. But that doesn't translate across the board. It's a, the word it's a cognitive distance. Uh, right. You know, so it's I definitely believe that's true. You know, definitely. Oh, this brother's preaching tonight. Oh, he bringing it tonight. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, man. Um. That's very, very true, and it's it's very, very important for, I, I think, of, of people of any minority and people of color to especially to know those rights um, and to know where the law protects you, because um, we don't we don't get a lot of protection from the law, we really don't. Nope. We we get we we qualify, so to speak, for the basic rights that. You know, our constitutions and Bill of Rights and amendments allow us. But when you really start to get into some of those individual acts that have been passed at the levels of law, a lot of times we're the group marginalized in those laws. A lot of times we're the groups marginalized in that act. Um, so a lot of times there's a – so we, we talk a lot about a systemic system that oppresses minorities and those are the those are the reasons why we say it and um expect hey, on this show we're gonna get we are we're gonna get into that stuff uh, we really are um so this is actually kind of a good i guess lead lead way into that and um you know some of the some, some of that stuff we will be bringing it to you so stay tuned but um 
know your rights, man. Know know what know what you are and are not able to do. Um, as just as just for the reason of you being born a U.S. citizen, you have you actually have a, a, an immense amount of power um, being a citizen if you know what your rights are. Um, That's definitely helpful. Like uh, Ed, uh, anything, everything, and nothing is good for their you know, black folk blue ain't for you segment. Because they show a bunch of people you. rights being violated regularly. So yeah, check them out as well. Shout out to Lenny and Kim right quick. Salute, salute, ladies. Yeah, they, yeah, they actually do have a great segment. Um, kind of, kind of highlighting that. Uh, speaking of segments, um, our petty party politics segment is, um, I mean, the coronavirus is kind of, it's kind of taking this segment over as we've had m- multiple um, dates of voting canceled. Um, the debate, the audience got pushed back, so we had a debate the other night between Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders that was without an audience, so it kind of made the debate. Either you get a chance to check out the debate, it's kind of weird with no audience. No, I missed that one completely. Completely. It was kind of like two old white dudes boxing or sparring or whatever. It was like marginally entertaining, but it's, you know, they're two, it's two 70 year old white dudes. So they, they, it was, it was still like, and they're, and they, and they're not like, it's not like they don't like each other. Like, but they just disagree on some things, but it, it was fun to watch. It was fun to watch, have them kind of go back and forth and spar with each other. Um, we had some voting happen today. Uh, I think Florida, um, a few other States, I think Bernie Sanders is getting, Bernie Sanders is getting creamed right now. Um, I think in most of those races, I think it was maybe three or four states, and some other states got pushed back. I um, can't remember precisely, but it's kind of another Super Tuesday. So I think they do the three Tuesdays in a row when, when multiple states vote. But today was Florida. Somebody else's polls closed at eight. Um, it's like Florida, Illinois, and Arizona. Yeah, I think yeah, this thing was like two or three states: Florida, Illinois, and Arizona. So right now, so I think Arizona's polls must have just closed recently yeah it says Uh, they're still open as of right now so they biden has illinois and florida they're wrapped he's already got illinois sewn up yeah yeah i knew i knew he wasn't winning the state of illinois it was just not i mean i knew Bernie didn't have a chance i thought he might have a better chance in florida but he's getting demolished in florida Yes, um, this it's about time to break out the fork and call the fat lady to save for Bernie's <laughs> campaign. Well, that's what we asked last week: is is Bernie done? Um, yeah, and we pretty much came to the consensus that he he is. I think at this point he's staying in just to stay in. I'm not sure why he's staying in actually, because this would be the perfect time to circle the wagons, as it were. This would be the perfect time to just be like, all right, everybody. Let's everybody vote for Joe Biden now. I didn't win, so all of my supporters vote for this dude so that we can get that dude out of, out of office. Do you know why I think he's staying in? I think, I think he's staying in because his progressive movement still has something to say. And I think, so as you, well, you guys didn't watch the debate, but at, in the debate, um, so Elizabeth... Elizabeth Warren had a really great plan um, related to um, it was some I think it was medic not Medicare for all I think it was one of the one like that type of plan where she's been actually been able to meet with Joe Biden and like whatever plan it is she she had him like integrate pieces of that plan onto his agenda. And 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 I think the reason why Bernie Sanders is, is staying in the race, at least for right now, is to make sure that the things that he and the people that support him are important to, he wants to make sure um, Vice President Biden hears him out so he can – so those people can know they have a place in his campaign. They, have, they would have a place in his administration. They would have a place in his agenda if he were to win the, win the, the nomination and then the White House. 
That's why. That's why I think he's still in. So he's literally staying to make sure the progressives still have a voice. I, I, that's what I think. I think he's. I think he's still in to make sure the progressives still have a voice. Um, I mean, that's fair. I guess that makes sense because it keeps people. It, at the very least, it's going to keep people entertained. It's going to keep. Well, not even entertained, but engaged. Because they're, the last time when Bernie lost, that was why Hillary lost, is because she sort of distanced herself so far from what he was saying that those people felt completely disenfranchised and just plain refused to vote. Yeah. So I think Bernie may have learned from that, and I'm hoping that Joe Biden has learned from watching that as well. Is You, you do still have to keep them close. Like what was a was that you was talking to me about the the Republican um, who was talking about how he had to kind of acquiesce to the Tea Party a little bit just yeah. to make sure that those voters would stay with him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, and so I I agree. Um, I think it's. I think it's important for Joe to kind of do what he wants to do right now and feel the the best vibe for his supporters. Um, but I I think just like last week, like I said, I think the the writing is on the wall. Um, I think he's I think he's out of here. Which um, leads to a new question. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this one at you from just in advance. Who uh-huh. does he select? Because it it seems to me that he's going to get this nomination. So who does he select as his vice president? If you were he, if you were one of his advisors, who would you tell him that he should choose? He said it'd be a woman, so we can cancel out all men. Um, Oh, man. Do you think that a Biden Warren card has a shot? I actually think that it does. I think that a, I think I think that a, a Biden Warren card definitely has a shot. Um, I'm just not sure where they're going. Um, I remember there was a time in this race where Elizabeth Warren was the front runner. Like she was indeed, I, and, I, and, and she, she is the she's the best debater of all of them. She's the one that I mean, she undressed Bloomberg several times. Um, you well, don't. Of the three wanna... of them, she is the best orator. She's the best. She's the best speaker of the three of them. Absolutely. Oh, she, I mean, I, I thought she was the best debater and speaker of the whole field. Um, and I honestly think, and this this may sound like a shot, but I honestly think if Elizabeth Warren was a man, she'd be the nominee. That sounds fair, and it, it, I, it I doesn't think, necessarily I, I sound think, like a I shot. I think if she was a man, well, if she was a man and absent Joe Biden. Joe, Joe Biden. Baby. Joe Biden decided to deciding to run changed everything. Because so, so I'll, I'll I'll rephrase. If she was a man and Joe Biden was not in this race, um, I, I think she would have easily won the nomination. Let me rephrase it one more time. If she was a man and Obama's coattails wasn't in this race, <laughs> that's well phrased. That's very well phrased. Because them coattails is dead serious winning a race right now. Them things long, bro. They get longer every day, boy. Them coattails longer than the last 30 minutes at work, boy. I'm trying to tell you. We got on some old school. Them them some old school tuxedo coattails, like from the prom. Oh, yeah. Them joints in Chicago, and they still been written. They still being written. So, um. And now, all of a sudden, what? Two Super Tuesdays ago? Joe had two hundred and fifty three thousand dollars to that he won with, and I think in this debate he said he's raised thirty million. I said, man, what a what a what a crazy difference a week or two can make in in politics, man. It's just, and I don't well, even know. A bunch of rich people mean. waiting for a front runner. Once they found that, they're like, oh, so the coattails do win. All right, well, let's just put our money over there. Then let's go. One of my Republican, one of my Republican friends of mine told me that Joe Biden cannot beat Donald Trump. But I know we got to move on. But what do y'all think about that? Like he actually said, though he actually said those words to me: Joe Biden cannot beat Donald Trump. And I was like, Wow, you think that? Like, wow, <laughs> like wow, like Obama if, makes an appearance, it's over for Trump. That's all I gotta say. 
Yeah, I feel like whoever is coming out of the Democratic the Party. Rhetoric, talking racist, and, you know, if he does anything he did the first time around now, and Obama makes an appearance, I, I think that's going to be when the show is up for Trump. Because I think people don't want that no more. But the majority who are now paying attention and actually are going to go vote. They are like, yeah, we can't, we can't have another, we can't have another four years of this. Should, idiots, should Barack? Any of the idiots and the idiots have ran enough, <laughs> you know. <laughs> stop. Should, should Barack Obama have campaigned enough for Hillary? Did like, did he, did he actually, did he actually campaign enough for Hillary? I think he did, and not only do I think he, he did, did, I think Marge. that Hillary's campaign was run wrong. Like from the, the the way that she went about things, she went about things by going through city bubbles. And whether or not we like 45, he ran a brilliant political campaign to get elected in the first place. The, th- the places he went, the people he talked to, the things right. he said when he got there. He ran a brilliant campaign. His strategy was on point. And I think that Hillary's strategy was not. Even when Barack started um, campaigning for her, it was the places they were going. So when Hillary got the nomination, do you remember the first city she went to? I don't remember. I don't either. But I do remember that the last place she went, when they were trying to win North Carolina, the last place she went was Charlotte. Yeah, I remember that. And the last place that Mr. Trump went to was Fayetteville. Mm. And I also remember that when he was trying to get, when he first, when he won the Republican nomination, the first place he stopped was Winston-Salem, North Carolina. That was his first date on the campaign tour. And so if you look at the two dynamics of the cities that he went to versus the cities that she went to, he wasn't necessarily going to the most populous places he was going to places right. where he knew that he could be most influential. And he still doesn't do that because the most populous places don't like him very much. He still right. he still finds a way to find like, you know, he, he'll go to, well, he won't go to Birmingham because it's too many black people there. But he'll go to like, what, what, he'll go to, he'll go to Tuscaloosa. He'll go to Haw River, North Carolina. Yeah, he'll go to, yeah, he'll go to somewhere, but he he's not going to go to. Like, well, he and he was here, but this is not a very Republican-friendly place. Um, it's got its pockets, but yeah, that old money, a, that old tobacco money. This right. is old heavily, money is old money. Heavily Democrat, Democrat ran right here. Um, so okay, you said it best, man. You know, never, and of course he didn't coin this phrase, but he constantly says this to me whenever we're, we're talking. You never underestimate the power of stupid people in large groups. No, ever, never, ever, never. So even though these small, you know, less populated places he's here going to, there's still a large group of people there, and you know, you know, the stat of forty million Americans can't read on the third grade level. So hey, it's a lot of them. It's a lot of them. Well, let a me lot ask of those people, you know, are backing them. Well, let me ask this: If you think that Barack Obama campaigned enough for Hillary Clinton, giving me the threat that Donald Trump is once there is a clear nominee does does Barack go all in on that nominee and just like he's everywhere with him and and or does he kind of like hang out in the background and just say I support this person or, or are we going to see Barack Obama and, and presumably Joe Biden everywhere together like we did for eight years I think we'll see uh, Barack more I, I personally think that Hillary Clinton, for one, she you know, she lost, she didn't win the black vote. I think black people were, at that time, waking up to some of the things she had she had done uh, when questions were being posed to her about what she had done, especially to the black community. The things that she said about the black community, uh, she had no answer. She had she didn't even have a, a, a politician spin. She would be stumped, you know, and then would do the deflecting back out apology half-assed but you know kind of bs and then she didn't have you know the the popular white male vote i guess you could say because she's not a white male um you know she's a woman 
Sorry to say it. I don't mean any offense by it. I love women. We talked about this last show. But I just think that's what happened with Hillary Clinton. And then, of course, you know, those emails, when that came out and how she reacted to that as well, when you go back to how Jason always makes fun of uh, 45, you know, 45, even though he may blatantly lie, he does it with confidence. Even though he may (laughs) give you an answer, I mean, he does it so confidently that the people who support him believe it. You know, and and at the same time, when he's ever opposed with uh, something that I he's done, I don't know. Past, I don't know if they believe it as much as they run from it. He'll, I don't, and, you know, I don't know if they lie, believe it, but as they, much they'll as they just don't they'll, care. Just, they'll they'll accept it. Okay, well, he at least yeah, he like, right, answered right. straight on, even though it was a lie. It was it was straightforward. He didn't deviate. <laughs> you know, straight. from that lie, he went in on that lie, and he and he didn't waver, and. He changed the subject real quick to go to something else, you know. Right. A lot, a lot of what Hillary was doing, that from what I saw, she just people were seeing through her. She wasn't, you know, a pimp is successful because he makes tricking feel like it ain't tricking. You know, he makes it feel like it's your idea to go out there and get that money. He, right. He, that's the, a good pimp, successful pimp who's got longevity. Hillary basically the veil was pulled off of her. She couldn't put it back, put it back on. She, you know, she couldn't pimp it no more. And right. we knew you was trying to pimp us now. You know, we know you're you're pimping Hillary, and then after she lost, we saw how she reacted. I mean, we, it, it was evident. You knew the jig was up. We were on to you. We didn't vote for your ass, and you acted like a sore ass little spoiled brat who couldn't get in and, and run things your way. Um, you know, uncharted like Teflon Don is doing right now. Yeah, but I, I will say this: I would much rather um, have had Hillary Clinton win than, than Donald Trump. Um. Much, I much. Rather. I agree with that statement, which is awful, mm-hmm. but true. Uh, yeah, I would have rather have right. neither of them. Exactly. Much, much rather. Well, you got you had who you, you had you had who you had. So that's what I'm saying. I would have much rather have had her than him. It's kind of like do you do you respect Teflon Don saying, you know what? Yeah, I know I'm guilty of this, and I'm not even going to listen to it. Matter of fact, you can have your trial. I don't care. Or do you want Hillary saying, yeah, I know you caught me red-handed. And I'm supposed to be guilty of this, but I'm not because I'm not. And I'm not because I didn't have anything to do with this. Even though you know I have something to do with this. Trump is like, yeah, I do have something to do with this, but I'm not talking about that right now. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, I admit it, but I, 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 ain't, I ain't sitting here facing consequences. Why? I'm the fucking president. Like, Hillary, to me, Hillary, Hillary would kill your whole family and go on TV and laugh and joke like it ain't no damn problem. Trump would kill your whole family. He ain't gonna go on TV because he knows I'm not gonna be able to laugh and joke like it ain't no problem. I, I just, I just believe that in my heart, you know. Sure, um, sure. Yeah, I, just, I, I mean, Teflon Don, he's smart enough to know I'm not gonna get on TV and deal with that. Hillary has no conscience. She'll do it. I mean, the, look at the interview she had about Gaddafi and she, how she laughed at this man being killed and and sodomized and, mm. and all kind of things. She laughed about that. That's Think about what she said about the. She called the entire race of black people super predators, bro. And then she's dancing and singing for their vote. I mean, Lee Trump was like, nah, I really don't fuck with y'all. You can work for me, but I mean, you know, I want your vote. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can work for me. I, I, I pay right. you. You know what I'm saying? I don't really fuck with you like that. And I'm going to be honest about it. I, I just don't. Or, right. and then he turned around, well, I do like some of you, so you know what I'm saying? Like, like MJ, I love MJ, I love Tiger, you know, like, I mean, yeah, if you got money, he fuck with you, he tells you that. Right. Like, some of the things that, you, you know, you could take it as a lesser evil, I guess you could say, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's Absolutely. just how I Absolutely. think people look at Hillary as like, we know you're evil, you're going to let us know you're evil, and then when you're caught being evil, you're going to downright lie to the point where it ain't even, it ain't even comical like Teflon Don, you're just, you're, you're, you're you're insulting stupid people's intelligence now. Not only intelligent people's intelligence, but stupid people's intelligence. Like, right. that's how far you've gone. And I think people can see that with Hillary. No doubt. No doubt. I, I got to I gotta respect that. I completely disagree, but I got to respect that. Um, and, 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 we can, and we can touch on that a little more. We can touch on that a little more. But um, we're going to switch gears a little bit. We're gonna leave the we're gonna leave the petty party politics behind until next week. I'm gonna t- <laughs> Y'all ready for our main topic of the night? 
Main topic. Let's get it. So, <laughs> Smack. <laughs> Killing me. I saw that. I saw that Hollywood ball. <laughs> Yo. Yo. I t- <laughs> Smack. Yo, that took me back, though. That took me back. Yo, so um in the outro, we 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 touched on a little bit um uh, of last week's show. Um this I'm gonna make a statement and then um I want y'all boys to tell me what it means. Um while I was trying to smash oh. I just so happened to start to like you. <laughs> Let Hollywood take. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let West Coast take it first. While, while I was trying to smash, I just so happened to start liking you. I feel like that's the story of most relationships that exist. I was just about to say, HP. I, I mean, um, Hollywood Paul. What does that mean? Damn, um, West Coast J. What does that mean, man? That's it. I feel like that's the story of most relationships. Most relationships so- begin with a dude. Trying to get some naughty. And while he's in that process, it turns out like, hey, you know what? I can actually watch this show with you and laugh with you about it. I can, we could go out and I kind of enjoy hanging out with you when I'm out. I think I might like you. All right. I think I like you. And that's how relationships will go. <laughs> in a nutshell, it's a simple concept. Like, does it always work that way? Absolutely not. Sometimes you just smash and you're like, all right, well, that's out of the way. You have nothing else to offer now. So we're, I'm, uh, I'm going to go. And thanks. Okay, bye bye. Other times, you actually find a cool person attached to the money you wanted in the first place. So it works itself out. And then you end up with a relationship. Okay. Like okay. Simplicity at its finest. I can dig it. I can dig it. Hollywood Paul, why don't you chime in for me, man? What, what does that mean? Like, while I was trying to smash, I just so happened to start liking you. All right, I can phrase that with a personal, personal uh, story here. I used to, I used to mess with this chick. I used to call her Biscuit. So if she's listening to this, Biscuit, what's up? <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> well, why, why are you whispering? I used, I used to call her Biscuit, man. You know what I'm saying? So um, why are you and, whispering uh, though? He had to get his anyways, voice, Rico Swamatic voice on. He had to get smooth on it. Because you know what I'm saying? I don't want my girl to hear me saying this right now, and then I have to answer who Biscuit is. <laughs> Right now, like later. No, we're keeping Paul off yes. the couch is what we doing. Now. That's why you whispering. Money, get out of his business. It's like true I that, said, true I said, that. I said, My I said bitch, bitch. but nah, um, nah. So I used to, I, I was chilling with Biscuit. Biscuit and I used to get up. You know what I'm saying? We we blessed the sky a little bit, burn something. We chill. We, we didn't talk about too much deep shit. But then one day, you know what I'm saying? We did, and. We would just chill, you know, and the whole reason why I was even blessing the sky with her because I wanted to smash, okay? I'm not going to lie. She was physically attractive to me, and I, I wanted to get some of that. And while we was chilling, I was like, man, this this chick kind of cool, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, we, we have like-minded interests, you know, uh, the things that are, aren't uh, alike. They are attracting me to her even more to get to know more about that side of life that I'm not interested in or have, uh, a, you know, an attraction to just outright. And... We we built a friendship, and I I really liked her. And then we started dating for a little bit. Then uh, you know, uh, I got distracted into something else. I wanted to smash. But point is, it all started because I was trying to smash. And you know what I'm saying? Didn't I ain't taking nothing away from Biscuit. She's a good girl. You know what I'm saying? Uh, she 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 looks so good. You wanna you wanna sop her up with the biscuit? But anyway, um, that's uh that's what happened, man. And I think that that's what happens. With a, a good 99% of people. There are some people that look at someone and, and I guess 
I have never experienced that. Or after talking to them, maybe they're like, hey, this is a person I could, I could think. That's a person I could see myself with. This is a person I could build a life with, build a, a, a foundation, an empire, whatever the, whatever the saying is, you, you run it through your head. And then there's 99% of us, females too, is, is, is all straight physical attraction. That's, that's what starts the conversation. That's what brings you two together to even, you know, exchange those, those flirty looks. Um, it's right. all based on physical attraction. Of course, then the personality comes out that either makes you more attracted to that person or turns you off. Um, but it all starts in the physical. Because, I mean, again, I go back to how we're wired to, to mate and procreate to sustain our lives. That's, it's just in our genetics. Mm. Okay. Okay. So. My money is your statement. So what does it mean to you? To you. Ooh, um, what does it mean to the kid? Let's see. Um, I I I completely agree with both of you. Um, but it, it, yes, it is it is my statement. Um, and and it and well, that's it, it means. You know, I, we I met you. I see you. You know, like I had in order for me to want to engage with you, in order like I didn't I didn't. I didn't start talking to you um, because, you know, I wanted to figure out, you know, what your theory is on, the th- you know, evolution. You know, that's not, you know, ah. that's not why I approach you in, in, in the store, in the mall or wherever. Wherever I approach you, it's not why I approach you. I approach you because you look good. I approach you because... Maybe you're you're you you had a certain posture. If you listen to our show last week, then you know like we did a whole. Um, the topic of the week was what attracts you physically to a woman. Like, uh, uh, like it is one hundred percent true that the very like the physical attraction to a person is the initial attraction to a person, and and I know lots of people want to deny that or they want to run from that or they want to you know kind of give you some type of label for that but that is the truth it's unequivocally the truth no one is just you know if they can't see you they're not they're not they're not gonna they're not gonna talk they might hold the door open for you or any of those like polite things but to actually like engage you in a conversation where they are interested in getting to know more that conversation is generated it is edged on it is egged on it is perpetrated it is all it is it is the seed is planted by the thing that we see and so i saw you i saw that you was like you was you was hitting three of the three the three of them things i like you you had them three of them things and and i and i just couldn't resist but your eyes are beautiful um you have a great shape on you and 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 you got long legs and they're beautiful and you got and, and and just oh and that that booty sitting up right just the way it's supposed I'm coming to talk to you. I am coming to talk to you. Um and I ain't you know, I'm coming because I see you. And so in the realm of those things, like there's that means I have a I have an attraction to you. So I need to I need to approach you and then kind of let you know that hey, I see you over here looking good. Like you know, I'm I'm hoping that your personality matches what I'm seeing. Cause then you know maybe we could talk. Maybe we could you know I'm <laughs> you know, maybe you smell good. I'm trying to find out. I'm trying to find out if you smell like that all the time. Like I mean, you just you just never know. But you never know what I'm gonna say either. So, um, and if and if I can get a smile out of you, if I can get a some sort of reaction, if I can get you know, you, you, you touch my elbow or you, if you give me any sort of feedback that is positive, I'm going to ask, can we exchange information? That's just, that's just, you know, that's the polite thing to do. Yeah. I'm that, you know, okay. Well, can we continue this conversation some other time? Can I get you lunch? You know, any of, I would, I would love to see if I can make you smile again. Like any, <laughs> I'm out here dropping bars out here. That, that motherfucker spitting. Um, any of those things. So what I mean, usually when I say that is like at that moment, I know that I'm, I have some intentions. I know that I have some interest and, you know, whether I end up liking you or not, 
you know, that's a whole like that's a whole different path. That's a whole different story. And so that's what I that's what I mean when I say that. Like while I was trying to smash, I just so happened to start liking you. Now I I have I have actually just like West Coast said, I've been in several relationships like that. I've been in several relationships that started because I was trying to smash. How what about either of you gentlemen? Man, uh, yeah. I uh, with regard to relationships, I don't necessarily look at things the same way that most people do. Uh oh, what the fuck does that mean, West Coast J? <laughs> <laughs> like I'm in constant relationships, relationships all the time. Some people okay. call them acquaintances. Some people call them whatever it is that you want to call them. That's what it is. But the way that relationships are made in general is not usually how I end up going about things. Okay. So, for me, that statement does not hold any water. Man, there's silence in the background. Where where are all the crickets coming from? Oh, I'm trying to figure out. I, I, I didn't know if you were finished or you were going right. to elaborate or like you just kind of left that off. The, I mean, just... like what the only that? elaboration is relationships. Now, them is way too expensive, bro. Fuck being sprung. I'm just trying to break you, ho. And I don't oh, leave wow. it at that. Oh, wow. I... <laughs> Hey, I, I I think I know what that means. Um, Hollywood, what about you, brother? I mean, I'm in a relationship, mother. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what do you want me to say, man? You trying to get me fucked up or something? <laughs> Hell nah. <laughs> I'm talking about you. This this not your only relationship ever. <laughs> Hollywood Paul die laughing. This ain't your this ain't your only one ever. Yeah. <laughs> but it's the man. only one currently. Right. So, hey, it's, it's the only one that matters, huh? That's right, man. That's it. It's the one. No doubt. doubt. So, no yeah. doubt. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer the question for him. That the answer to that question is most likely yes. Yeah. He is. <laughs> for most people, I would question, say the answer is yes. I agree with that. It's, the answer to that question is most likely yes. You ended up you ended up with your boyfriend because he, you he was trying to smash and he ended up liking you. But that's ladies. That's not ladies. That's not a bad thing. That actually means that like you actually have qualities and characteristics and traits and like shit about you, positive shit that we liked and we wanted to make sure that you were in our orbit and we were around that all the time. And um And on top of that, you know your shit ain't trash if you stay and wanna keep smashing. Hey, and that too. Um, <laughs> your shit not trash if he stayed wanting to keep smashing. That's real. Um, so let me ask y'all this: because women, women, women love to say, "Oh, just tell me the truth. Just keep it real. Just keep it real with me." Can you really keep it just real with a woman? Can you really just be like, "Yeah, I just, yeah, I just want to smash." Is that is that is that a thing? I mean, the honest it's answer is not if you got any game about you. If you're really just trying to smash, then you got to go about trying to smash. Like, there's an art to it. It is. If you're going to keep it real, front, then keep it real. It's some that works with some. That doesn't work with all. Okay? Because not all women or men, even if a woman comes to a man and say, I just want to smash. So not everyone is mature enough to really understand what that means. You know, um, give you a prime example. I'm going to tell y'all a story in a minute after after you um, finish with that. Prime example, you know, back in my single days, the homie Tip. Tip was, came to me and was like, yo, I just want to smash. I don't want a relationship from you. I don't want nothing. Of course, me being me and, and you know, having older siblings and seeing shit like this play out. I gave him a talk, like, yo, you, you're not going to be able to handle that. You're going to start developing feelings. You know, we get, the more I smash, the more, obviously, we're going to spend time together pre and maybe post smashing. Right. Uh, 
And of course, you, you're going to grow feelings and then you're going to want more. And then I'm, I've gone into this with the mindset that this is all I'm doing. And, and if I haven't changed that mindset and you have, we're going to have a problem. Or if I've changed my mindset and you haven't, there could be a problem. So are you ready to deal with this? Because because I could walk away from this and not think twice about you. Right. But that's my nature is being somebody who can detach real easily. Not everyone can. And of course, she said, yeah, yeah, of course. Come on, what do you think I am? Come on. And what do we do? I smashed, okay? A couple of smashes later, we need to talk, Paul. Okay, about what? You trying to smash it or something? No, what are we doing? <laughs> uh, we're doing exactly what you approached me with. What are you talking about? I mean, but really, that's all we're doing? So, okay. Remember this conversation I had about this like three weeks ago? Here we are now. So, um, needless to say, it didn't end well for, for Tip because I, I, I didn't change my standpoint of what I went into it. Yeah, I just didn't. Um, but she did. And, of course, again, that goes back to the maturity level. If she was being solely mature about the situation, she would have picked up on all the signs that that wasn't going to happen um, by just listening to the conversations we were having about the other shorties that wouldn't be to smash or I was smashing. Um, right. You know, um, she she would just she, the cognitive dis, dissonance wouldn't have set in on her, thinking that something is what it ain't, um, because the writing was on the wall right in front of her. I mean, I was up front, everything, how she approached me, I, I gave it right back. But somewhere along the line, she went left. You gave her, ju- you gave her exactly what she asked for. Exactly, and it was enough. Now there was another situation where a shorty came at me like that, and. Mm-hmm. Over time, I started kind of wanting a little bit more of that, you know, more of this right. whole interaction. And she was like, nah, bro, I told you that's all it was. And because I came out of like, yo, like, is you is you feeling me more than just magic or what? You know what I mean? Because I, mean, you... I tried to avoid that we need to talk, you know? Like, are you, right. is, is you feeling it? Is you feeling this? Like, well, I mean, I am, but I ain't. And once she said that, I was like, enough said. You know, because you ain't been, obviously your mind hasn't been thinking about that. Because you didn't right. think there, you didn't have to think like that. Because we were on the Say same page, just smashing. Absolutely. So you know, I've been in both sides, but I was mature enough to handle it. Like, okay, yeah, let me just enjoy what I'm getting. Because I, I, I entered into this just smashing. There ain't no need to try to you know fix what ain't broke. Now, if I went into this with, hey, I'm trying to smash, and and we'll see what it is after that, then yeah, right. that would have been a conversation that was expected to have, but. To go in knowing this is all it is, like that's all it is, and a, a lot of people they can't handle that, they can't process that, they can't they can't accept that, you know. It's, right. it's not after a while. I mean, they, you know what I'm saying? They just yeah, they'll lie and wear that hat for the moment, but nah, not for real. It's a front to get to get their foot in the door. So here's what's crazy. So I I, I want to I started seriously like seriously started to like notice and seek attention from women when I was like 16 and um I was so I won't even say women I'll say I'll say women, girls females whatever um and I that's not how I that's not how I started like, I was always in a scenario where like the girl I was like kicking it with was like my girlfriend and so the first time I was in a smashing situation I was in college and it wasn't like the girl actually just smashed me. But like, so when she did it to me, it really actually fucked me up because I had never had that shit happen before. Like I thought we was, I thought, I thought we was like headed towards a thing. And then she hit me with this. You said, what's well, sure shorty hit you? And she was like, Oh nah, like, nigga, like all this, like you spent that time thinking you was, you was coming for me. Nah, nigga, I was coming for you. And like, that's what she- <laughs> Like that—that's how she hit me. That's how she hit right. me when she said, "Nah, I—I—I I, I, I wanted your dick." Mm. And 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 real talk. And now and now I've had it and I'm good. Like we don't we ain't none of that. So don't be telling niggas on campus me and you nothing or nothing like cause it mm. ain't nothing like that. Mm. I just I I wanted some of you, and I was like, wow. Like mm. <laughs> you, so again, in this scenario, use the feeling catcher. Well, I won't say I had caught feelings, but just in my my experience, all that thus far had been like you you spending time with with somebody, you, y'all giving each other attention, and, and y'all are, y'all dating and y'all are item. You know what right. I'm saying? So right. that's where he went. Once he started smashing, it went to something. So he didn't he didn't really have 
the experience of just smash and grab it until you got the car. Right. I, I had never I had never done that before. Like every 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 woman I ever had every every girl I had ever done anything with, we were together. Right. So I in my mind, I was like I'm like a sophomore. You know what I'm saying? She she's an incoming freshman. She coming in. You know what I'm saying? I'm playing baseball yeah. and shit. I'm, I'm thinking I'm, I'm thinking I'm that dude and all that. And she come on campus and shit looking all super duper good and and um. You know, I'm like, damn, like, who that? They like, yeah, that's such and such. And I'm like, yeah, shit, I want her. But like, no, not realizing that she she doing the same thing to me. She asked me, shit, who that? Shit, that's money. And so like, so when we kind of hooked up, it was like, you know, so we this, we smashed more than once. We hooked up a few times, but like, so I thought we was, I thought it was a thing. Right. So when I, so when I came at her, like we was a thing. Oh, she shut me all the, all the way down. All nice. the way you completely got the, down. You got the wolf disguised as sheep clothing <laughs> conversation. Just the peep. You got the whoa, 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 whoa. You ain't my man. Except, yo, that's what she is. No, no, niggas. Yeah, I'm out here. I'm in these streets. Because I try to check her like, yo, I see you. Why you, I see you talking to such and such and such and such. You know, yeah. first of all, first of all, such and such is my man's. And that dude is cool. Oh, what, what nigga, what you thought this was? What I thought this was. Like. <laughs> Yeah, I'm fucked up in the game. I'm like, oh shit! I thought we was nah. Let's have a talk. Let's have a talk. You you mm. thought this was you thought this was X Y Z? Nah, nah, dude. I just you know you just something I wanted. Somebody and, told um, you wrong. That's hilarious. I was, Sounds I like was the literally, um, you remember Naughty was, by Nature? I believe it was the Great Trench who once said, "You put your heart in a part of a part that spreads apart, and forgot that I forget when you have a spark." Mm. Yeah, mm. bro. Yes. I, um, first time I dealt with that experience, fucked me up in the game. Came back the next summer, was a monster. Like it was, <laughs> but I understood. Like I understood that. Like, oh, That's where it all started, huh? Yeah. Like, oh, oh, this is people out here doing it like this, you know. Um, but yeah, some college, people college just legit turned... like the fuck. Yeah, college college turned me on to that shit, and I did not know. I did not know that it was it was it was women out there like that until college. I was like, oh shit, it's like chicks out here will fuck you just because they want to fuck you. Like they, then that's all. Like they ain't want they don't want none of that extra shit. I look, I ain't come here for none of that. Like I just, <laughs> so, um, West West Coast, you ever been just smashed? Yeah, it's a thing. Whenever you get to, it, the, I like those. Those are my favorite. The, when it needs to happen, you can tell from both sides. Just like you know what, we need to just fucking get this over with. <laughs> get that shit out the way. Everybody get a nut. Go on with their day. Still be amicable the next day. How you doing? You over there? I'm over here. That's what's up. Like so, those, yeah. those are the best. Is it more? Is it more of a man thing that wants to smash, or is it the more of a woman thing that wants to smash? Or can it just does it not matter? Is it, it can be. It either. does not matter. Like at this point in where we are in a, as a society, the women are as aggressive, equally more so in some cases. When they want it, they will come tell you. Right. And you get to decide right then if that's what you want to do or if that's not what you want to do. It's a decision you got to make. It's like uh, Hollywood just said. If you are, uh, most people are not prepared for that. Like in my mind, they're not really ready for it. And so they end up stuck in a spot where they've now caught feelings, but the other person told them what it was. And so that if they is chose an equal not to listen. Statement. Like, that's Absolutely. your choice. You choose not to listen, you choose not to listen. But if somebody tells you who they are and what they want, you should probably listen to them because they're usually telling the truth when they come at you that way. Speaking of that, money, I had a chick back in Fayetteville years ago. Um, she was a she was a Fayetteville State hooper. You know what I'm saying? And I was still hooping then, so we had a little love and basketball thing going on. Right? right? So it was all cool and shit, right? And she came at me, like, straight up. Basically, she she wanted to smash. She heard about how I did it and wanted to see if it was true. <laughs> right? That's the bottom line. What she told me the truth, and I was like, "Oh, who told you?" She was like, 
do it matter? I'm like, not for real, because obviously you're here. She said, yeah, but after smashing a couple times, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I, I really like you. Like, we could work out, hoop together, chill, video game, all that. And I wasn't really feeling her like that. Like, it was fun, what we were doing, but be honest, I was freshman in college. I was, I don't know, I was, I was out there, bro. You know what I'm saying? I, I wasn't right. trying to be locked down to this chick, you know what I'm saying, running over here to, to this campus and all that, doing, trying to do the whole thing like that. I wasn't mature enough, for one. Um, right. I, I knew that. So I was like, and she basically let me know, I, I went to smash and ended up started liking you. And I was just like, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? I didn't know how to handle that shit. And I had to have a talk with her. So it's it's happened to me on the, on the opposite end, you know, from a female. So, you know, nice. then I had a female came to me and was like, like straight up gave me the whole spill that you went through. Like I I, I kind of went through that 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 stage that that moment that was like, let me wake the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? Um, Shorty was just like, nah, I, I wanted to smash just because I, I was horny as fuck. I felt like you was cool. You know what I'm saying? You won't out here just smashing any 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 and everybody. So right. So like, and then we had this sexual tension between us. Let's just get it out the way, and uh, we got that shit out the way. And then after that, I mean, I barely spoke to that chick. I mean, I'll say hi, and we, like like Jason saying, we would be respectful, be amicable to each other whenever right. we cross paths. Well, there's no going out of each other's way to try to check up on one another and nothing like that. It was just like, yo, this is what I want for right now. You're the person that can fill that void. Are you down, or do I need to call somebody else? Was like, right, I mean, I'm down. You know what I'm saying? I'm down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yo, that, yo, I, I feel you because that's that's it. Like I showed he did me. Like it was like yo, we we saw each other like every day, and like like one like one day we just cut off like contact. Like, so we were still cool, but like, and then right. the crazy part is we talked about the shit le- years later. She was like, "Yo, money, I gotta apologize to you because like." You one of the coolest dudes I ever met, and and I know I just handled you like that. And I was like, nah, you taught me some shit. Right. I was like, so nah, you don't, don't got to apologize to me. Like you, like you really opened my eyes to, to some shit that I did not know was was out there. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, yo, so I like I appreciate it. But like to this, like to this day, it's so many people that don't know. Like that's a that's like that's a that's a notch on my belt. But like because <laughs> we like when right. we in public, we don't even you know. Bad but I was. Bad. Yeah. yeah, we don't even yeah. act like that. So you know, we you know, so we we see each other, and then people, you know, nah, that's that's the homie. But um, yeah, man. So I, I can I completely get it, man. Like, wow. But I, I just think that's where it starts though, the attraction, like you know, from anybody. It, it just starts there, and you know, what I'm saying based on kind of how you're set up. Like if you're set up as like a nester, you 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 need to be in a relationship. Then yeah, you're gonna see somebody you like and want to smash. And meaning you, you like what you see, so you want you want to get closer into it. And then of course you being a nester, the first opportunity you see in that person or first glimpse of hey I can nest with this person, you're gonna try to do that. But if you're not set up like that, you set up as a player type, then you know you might start to like them and be like damn I don't know how to how to handle these feelings because you know, I'm, not, I'm not used to this. You know, and then you could be like how you and I were at one point. We're new to the whole smash and grab type thing, so we're like. Well, I want, I'm not trying to catch feelings, but I feel like I'm supposed to. Right. You know? So, it's, it's, it's a lot of different situations, but it all starts with the physical side. Of it. All Period. starts with the physical side. And the reason why I wanted to touch on it is because I think that's an equal opportunity. I think when the women first heard that statement, they was like, oh, money, y'all. Uh. But keeping it 100, keeping it a buck, I think that's an equal opportunity statement. Absolutely. Why the hell is somebody making me their work boyfriend? If they ain't liking what they see, I don't know you from nowhere. I just met you. Wow, wow. I'm, a, I'm your work boyfriend. You're dibbing me. You're, dib, you're putting dibs on me just in case that one night in the Omaha airport bar, we just happened to be delayed on the flight and had one too many shots of him. You're thinking I'm going to blow your back out now because I'm your work boyfriend. I mean, that's the whole thing about it is because you're physically attracted. So, yeah, yeah, man. That's where we start. Equal opportunity. Definitely. Definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey that's man. How we go. Speaking of equal opportunity and that's being how things go, man. We hate to do it to y'all, but we gotta wrap this one up, man. Um West Coast. Zip them up. Yeah. So getting back to the Rona right quick. If you think you're sick, call your doctor first. 
Don't just show up. They'll tell you what to do. But call your doctor first. Emergency rooms are being flooded with false positives. False people who think they got something because they read, saw it on the news, read it on Facebook, or heard it somewhere. Call your doctor first. Then go to the doctor. You feel me? Like, do, do that. Now, as for my faith in humankind, please try and maintain your six feet, six to ten feet from other people. We don't know who got it. You don't have to be symptomatic to give it away or receive it. So, you know, continue to be excellent to one another. Stop fighting over toilet paper. Treat other people the way you want to be treated. That's all I got. First, Hollywood Paul, man, zip them up, man. Yo, man, I'm gonna just leave y'all this. Wash your motherfucking hands, okay? Went to the restroom today at 6.45. Dude, if you listen to this, you know who you is. Do not wash your motherfucking hands. I politely called you out of this shit before, okay? And I politely told everybody who was in the vicinity as soon as I walked out the restroom what you did not do in there. They knew. They knew. Anybody spreads the shit is your ass. So please, folks, wash your motherfucking hands, okay? And also, to piggyback off my man West Coast, your CVSs, you know, uh, they have many clinics, they got urgent care, they have all kinds of different facilities. Call first before you just run out there. Don't web and be, you know, the symptoms and diagnose yourself. You're not a doctor. You know, Facebook, do not go off that. That's stupid, okay? Um, Call your doctor, go get checked, go get seen. I know it sounds like a, a AIDS after school special, but it's not. We're dealing with Corona. That bitch ain't taking the prisoners. She ain't racist in one bit. Okay? So, if you see somebody in need, like I said last week, do not talk to them. Tell them to go to the fucking doctor after they call. It might just be sick. Guess what? By doing that, you might save a life. Straight up. Damn. That's real. That's real. Um. Hey, I don't have nothing too crazy, man. Um, thank you, audience. Thank you, listeners. Keep messing with us as we, as we on this ride, man. We are definitely enjoying bringing this content to y'all. We hope y'all enjoy us bringing it to you. I'm having fun with my guys, man. Hopefully, we brought y'all another great show. I enjoyed it. Um, yo, if you if you still if you still gotta go to work every day, man, you gotta and you just feel like it's just not like. At least ask them what the plan is. Don't 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 be afraid to to ask like what like what what about our safety? Like what what about like you know it's a national pandemic out there. Like most people are working from home. What's the plan for us? You know and just you know it's it's always a method and you got to meet them where they at sometimes. But you, you if, sometimes you got to make your own safety your your first priority. So you know don't be don't be afraid to say something. Definitely ask what the plan is. And um, we gonna we gonna get through this thing, man. We gonna get through this thing. But appreciate y'all listening. This has been episode seven, of unsupervised the spinoff podcast. And y'all already know what I'm gonna say, man. If you're not rocking with the following, what's your life about? We out. If you're into all things comics, you have to check out Take a Knee for Marvel vs. DC, your go-to podcast for comic and superhero discussion, debates, polls, and more. Tune in as regular Scott and Ozzy Killmonger chat about your favorite comic topics, and you never know who may show up for an open mic or what will be next on their favorite, One Gotta Go. Take a Knee for Marvel vs. DC, every Sunday, powered by the Defy Life Podcast Network.